All right, great. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to thank everyone for joining me to talk about people-powered research and the Zooniverse platform. And thank you to all the workshop organizers. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I'm Andrea Simonstad. I am a web developer at the University of Minnesota. Um, I work on a team of um, a bunch of wonderful web developers and researchers, um, mainly um, located at the University of Oxford, the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, and the University of Minnesota. So today I am going to introduce you to the Zooniverse platform and our approach to people powered research. And then I'm going to do a short project builder demo, which is our DIY project building tool. So the Zooniverse is one of the world's largest platforms for people powered research. And with the help of our volunteers, our goal is to enable research that would not be possible or practical otherwise. Um, as a side note, uh, we had some um, maintenance that is taking a little bit longer than we thought from early, early this morning. So the site is currently down, but hopefully it will be back and end up for exploration um, by the afternoon. So first of all, I just wanted to provide a definition for people-powered research. Um, uh, I think we can describe it as an open call to members of the public to participate in a research task. Frequently for Zooniverse, this looks like data collection, data classification, evaluation, and analysis. Um, frequently, you will also see this term used interchangeably with crowdsourcing um, or citizen science. So these are some of the advantages I consider when I'm talking with the research team about using a crowdsourcing platform like Zooniverse um, to meet their research goals. So if you're working with a large crowd, it opens up um, amazing opportunities for working with larger data sets um, at a much uh, faster scale um, than maybe you could do alone or with a small team of researchers. Um, another really wonderful component, um, especially if you're working with volunteers, is public engagement. Um, I think it's a really amazing thing to not only share your results with the public, but also involve them in the actual analysis of data um, and uh, data processing. Um, a really amazing outcome we've seen in some of our Zooniverse projects is that volunteers bring a fresh set of eyes to data that a research team may have been looking at for a long time. And so they may raise new questions or see new things in the data that you hadn't considered. Um, we have had volunteers who have ended up um, working with research teams and being involved in papers, um, found really exciting uh, new discoveries like new types of galaxies, um, so I think that is really an invaluable aspect. I think another thing to evaluate is cost. So the Zooniverse Project Builder um, is free, but um, there is a lot of time and effort that's involved in having a successful um, volunteer-based crowdsourcing project. Uh, there's definitely a lot of effort that has to be um, maintained for uh, public engagement um, in that aspect of your project. So to give you a little bit more background on the Zooniverse, um, it came out of a project called Galaxy Zoo in 2007, um, which was an immensely successful project where volunteers helped a research team um, classify galaxy shapes. And since then, as we've grown as a platform, um, we have more than 2 million volunteers worldwide, um, over 200 projects that are um, officially Zooniverse projects, and over 520 million classifications. So a lot of that work made possible by volunteers uh, has resulted in over 200 peer-reviewed publications. 
So the types of research disciplines that um, the Universe platform serves are many. So we have a lot of astronomy projects like Galaxy Zoo. We also have a lot of ecology projects where teams have set up um, grids of motion trigger cameras and volunteers have done an amazing job helping um, find different species in the images. Um, there's a lot of really great transcription projects. Um, so one transcription project, Mapping Change, um, volunteers are helping to transcribe um, herbarium uh, sheets so that uh, we can create uh, a better idea of um, how species ranges have changed over time. And then another one that I'll talk about is um, Penguin Watch, where we ask volunteers to count penguins. So um, over the past couple of years, uh, we've grown quite a bit. And this is the number of projects that we've launched per year. Um, we definitely have a lot of ecology projects. Um, and the great increase in projects has been aided by our launch of the Project Builder. So um, the Zooniverse uh, provides each project with their own um, classification interface. And when a volunteer arrives at a classification interface, um, they are served a piece of data, usually an image or video, and we actually call that the subject. Um, and the research team determines beforehand how many um, volunteers need to independently provide a classification on a subject. And once that number of classifications is met, the subject is then retired from the system. So it's no longer pulled for subject selection and presentation. And then once you have enough retired subjects, you can aggregate those responses. Uh, and then we ask researchers to um, make their data publicly available as well as the papers publicly available. So all the volunteers who have put in hard work to produce those results um, are actually able to access them. Another really important um, aspect of these projects is interacting with the researchers on talk boards, which is our discussion forum, and blog posts and social media. So one of the projects that I wanted to highlight was um, the University of Wyoming raccoon project. Uh, this team is studying animal cognition um, through raccoons' ability to solve puzzle boxes. And they've set up cameras so they can non-invasively observe um, the raccoons uh, during the night. Um, and this is what their classification interface looks like. At this point in time, they are asking volunteers to draw bounding boxes around the raccoons. Um, and that will, this first part of the project um, is working towards building a machine learning data set so that we can hopefully eventually um, follow individual raccoons like um, They've described that the team's described it as like following Alice the raccoon throughout the data set um, so that they can more effectively um, answer their research questions. Um, another project that uh, has been launched at this universe is Etchesel. It was launched by the Francis Crick Institute in 2017. Um, and this project has asked volunteers to help identify the nuclear envelope. Um, and these annotations and segmentations will help those researchers build better 3D models of these cells. So the reason, one of the reasons I chose this example was to sort of talk about our annotation process. So here we have the subject image and in green, um, you can see an example segmentation or annotation by a volunteer. So we overlay a scalable vector graphic over top of the image so that we can, um, we can store the data points that represent this annotation. Okay. Um, so now that you've seen a couple of different projects and you have an idea of 
um, the history of the universe. Um, I wanted to talk about the two kinds of projects that we generally, um, that are, pro or the two categories that our projects generally fall under. So the first one is the project builder, which is our free DIY tool. Um, this tool uh, came out of many years of doing custom front end development for individual projects and wanting to create a um, shared resource uh, so that people could, re could use those tools that had been tried and tested. So that includes like a lot of drawing tasks, question tasks, um, survey tasks, and free text entry. Um, and I'll be demoing that in just a minute. Um, and then the other type of project we have is custom projects. So um, there are always new teams that would like to build a new tool. And so we prototype that tool in a custom build before bringing it into our um, DIY platform. So um, if anyone is interested in that, we usually um, work with a research team on a grant proposal um, to uh, establish a custom development process. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is demo our project builder. So you can find it at zooniverse.org slash lab. And all you need to use the project builder is a Zooniverse account. So you will register and then sign in. I will note that your username will show up in the URL of your project, so choose it wisely. And then you will be directed to your project page, and this will list all the projects that um, you are an owner of, as well as all the projects you're collaborating on. So we would go ahead and click create a new project. We could give it a name, a short description, an introduction. And after you do that, you will be directed to your project editor. So here you will have access to um, your project details. You can create an about page. Um, you can create a number of different uh, roles for different people on your project, whether they just need to see the testing interface or they need access to everything. Um, when you create a project, it is automatically private. So if you share the URL, someone will need to be added as a collaborator and signed in. Um, and then we also have quite a few um, built in uh, features for guiding participants through your, your, through your research question. So that includes a field guide, a tutorial, and in-task help. So the next thing we do is upload subjects. So you have something to um, develop your interface around. And that is fairly easy. All of our subjects have a subject manifest um, in the same folder as the subject. So this is a very simple example. Um, you'll include the file name and then any metadata you would like to include with your subject that would be available to the volunteers. Um, so here, uh, the only things that are hidden have a hash in front of them, but otherwise everything else volunteers have access to. So then there are two ways to upload subjects. You can drag and drop them into the interface. We also have a Python client to manage your project. So um, you, you can use the Python client to upload subjects, to um, download your data, among many other things. So after you've created some subjects, it's, um, the next step is to create a workflow. And for us, a workflow is a set of ordered tasks that you would like your volunteers to complete for each unit of data. So common ones are questions, drawing, text, and survey. And then you'll have a project um, looking much like this, where we have an image and we're asking a question. Um, and another really important part of our projects is the discussion forums called, we call them talk. Um, and you can set up all sorts of boards. And this is a place where we really 
find a lot of amazing um, interactions between the volunteers and the researchers directly uh, so that um, if the volunteer has a question about something or wants to know more about a particular topic or a particular image, they can ask that question here. And then of course, you'll want to export your data. So we have um, data exports and you will have an option of getting it in a CSV. Um, and you can also export things like the talk comments and things like that. So one last thing that I wanted to talk about um, is the fact that we are, because even though we have a lot of volunteers, there is more and more data, especially a lot of our astronomy projects have a huge amount of data incoming. And um, we want to use our volunteers' time as effectively as possible. So um, we are in a, several different projects um, working on ways to combine machine classifications and human classifications. Um, one project where that's been very successful is in an ecology project. Um, so uh, if a model has um, a prediction that of a, whether an image is empty or not, um, and a confidence threshold on that, and that matches a volunteer's classification, um, you may be able to retire that image from subject selection much faster um, because you feel more confident that if both of those, um, piece, both of those um, pieces agree, then uh, that piece of data has been analyzed correctly. So I just want to say thank you. Um, please feel free to reach out with questions here um, or later. Um, yeah, thank you very much. And amazingly, we have plenty of time for questions. So go ahead and raise your hands. And I'm having trouble finding the Zoom interface. Let's see. Maybe I click on, yeah, click on participants. And then anyone who has their hand raised should end up at the top of the list of participants. OK, perfect. And since there hasn't been anyone who's raised one yet, I was hoping you could talk a little bit about, um, uh, so the, the most, like the classics universe things have been image tagging for uh, uh, astronomical data and more okay. recently, um, you know, animal data, you know, uh, photos of animals. Have, um, have you worked with any cognitive scientists or had any thoughts about the kinds of data that um, we might want to be able to uh, people source. Yeah, um, I think uh, we, the, the raccoon project is um, one of the first projects I know of that's specifically looking at like an animal cognition, hopefully, um, in their results. Um, I do think in terms of like uh, natural language processing research, there is already a lot of transcribed data it is frequently um, historical data, but I think that that could be a really um, interesting, interesting area for looking at questions of sociolinguistics and stuff like that. Um, so those are two places that I've particularly thought about, um, but also would be, we don't have, a, a, um, it's definitely an area for us that we haven't explored as much. So if there are ideas about what people would find interesting or what people would find useful, I would be really happy to hear about them. Uh, we have a question through chat, which is, what's the profile of the volunteers? Ah, that's an excellent question. Um, so that I 
we have, we are working on um, possibly constructing a survey upcoming. Um, I don't have that uh, on me at the moment, um, but I think the, we have worked with social scientists before um, to assess some of that. But for the most part, um, we have had some people who've done surveys alongside their universe projects, but um, I don't have that right on me, but I can try and look it up for the, um, the breakout session in the afternoon. That'd be great. Or if you can just pop it into the chat at some point, I'm sure people yes. would love to see it. Another question from the chat, can a Zooniverse project include training and testing of the volunteers before they process the data? And this is actually a great question because I know some Zooniverse projects have really cool training components. Yeah, so there are um, some training and intervention um, projects where people are giving feedback about um, whether they got something right or wrong. Um, and there you can set up sort of like a training workflow and um, you can level up to the next workflow. Um, so that is, I think, still sort of an admin enabled feature. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely um, contact us before you get too set up in your workflow so that we can make sure that, um, that that's a possibility. We have another question from chat. Yeah. Um, the idea is to make, uh, as the idea to make citizen research, the idea is to make citizen research, is it possible to track individual contributions to the research like in a really detailed way? Um, one could make some sort of experiment. Ah, they're interested, yeah, they're interested in can you do research on uh, people participating in citizen science, which I believe Zooniverse has done quite a bit of. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I'm also reading the question. <laughs> um, so we do have um, researchers. So you can choose when you set up your Zooniverse profile um, if you would like to be um, credited in the project. Um, but also there has been um, research about what people's motivations are for coming and participating in the research platform. So a lot of people um, are motivated by just wanting to be a part of uh, the research process and contribute to that. Um, so there's definitely, I think, a lot still to explore there, but um, that is something that we've been asking questions about too. Awesome. Thank you everyone for the questions. <laughs>